Little disclaimer for what you're about to see, I made the video and the guide itself before some changes that were announced or shown on Newell Database just today. None of these changes are affecting what I would do in terms of build, but they make things a little bit weaker. For example, we have a little bit less damage on Arcane Vortex. We have a slightly shorter duration on the cleanse of the same ability, especially that's a very major one, but it's still gonna be very good to have the cleanse and the maximum duration is still five seconds. So it's still very much an excellent perk to have. Uh, the self heal on supportive blessing is slightly reduced and the healing on better together is reduced with the timing between ticks now being three seconds. So. Generally, some small changes here and there, probably a few smaller ones that I've missed as well. But overall, nothing that will affect any of the builds that I'm showing you here. All of them would stay exactly the same. Ahoy! I tested a lot of different flail builds on the PTR and also did some theory crafting to tell you what I think are some very solid builds to go into the expansion. This is a little bit of a work in progress, but I will give you five different builds that I think are useful for PvE and PvP. Just in case you haven't seen them yet, a quick ability overview here and a showcase of how the abilities work. Arcane Smite is basically just a ground slam that then has various lingering effects afterwards. Overall, very, very effective. The skill also comes with one of the most game-changing PvP perks, which is Burdening Smite. Smite hits against targets extend their active cooldowns by 16% on armor and by 35% when on your weapon. I'm expecting this will play a major role in PvP in large-scale combat, especially wars. In Arcane Vortex, you spin the flail over your head, dealing damage four times, 85% weapon scaling each, so pretty good damage. Uh, what is worth pointing out with this ability in particular is that it kind of tracks towards a target in front of you, it kind of locks onto them, so you don't really have full control, you can't just freely spin in whatever direction you want, but rather you kind of have to steer against that a little bit, depending on where you want to go. Alongside good damage, this also comes with a ton of other utility, such as an empower, a potential root, and also a cleanse for allies. The weapon perk is Mending Vortex. Every two hits, Vortex will heal you for 25% of the base weapon damage, or 45% on weapon. Not that great, but also not terrible, just a nice bonus, because it is only two of the four hits, but on the other hand, it seems that there is no AoE cap here, so the more targets you hit, the more it should heal, as far as I can tell. Arcane Eruption is a double hitting attack that first applies some debuffs and then has a follow-up attack that can even consume part of that debuff. The problem that I have with this ability is that it doesn't have grit on the second attack, so it's not necessarily a guaranteed hit. The weapon perk Powerful Eruption gives you 10% increased damage per stack of impairment on the target, one of the debuffs that the flail can apply with many different things. This is 6% on armor and 10% on weapon, and as far as I can tell, by using the ability itself, your second hit, as long as you're not consuming any of the stacks, should already deal at least 6 or usually 12% increased damage. Barrage is a forward charge with a leap at the end. The perk for this is Accelerating Barrage, which gives you 35% haste if you hit a target with the main attack, which is the slam at the end, which lasts for 5 seconds. The haste is 35% on weapon or 20% on armor. It is pretty solid because if you are hitting someone on the way out or using this to engage, then you can follow up chasing with that. Or if you're using this just to chase someone who is escaping, if you're using this as an escape, you're not really gonna benefit from this because the slam is usually not gonna hit anyone. Trip is a knockdown with 50% weapon damage that if you spec into it also get some extra debuffs and effects as well as a second follow-up attack. The problem that I had with this, because I was playing PTR on very high ping, was that this didn't really connect to people that were running away. They would just walk outside of the range, because it doesn't seem to stick to enemies like, for example, Wrecking Ball does. So I'm not entirely sure if that is a problem on live servers as well, or if this is just a ping issue, but because of that, I don't rate this ability as highly. The perk for it is also very underwhelming. Thwarting a trip deals 30% more base damage on weapon or 20% more on armor if the target has active grit, in which case you wouldn't be knocking them down in the first place, so you want to avoid using it in that moment to begin with. The extra damage isn't much because the base damage of the ability itself is very low, so it's not very impactful. You can do some decent damage with the follow-up attack, but again, that requires connecting the first hit in the first place. There are some other mechanics with trip that I still want to test, like for example the heavy attack label here. I will do that in the future on live, but for now you won't see all too much of trip in the builds that I'm suggesting because from what I've found so far, other abilities were just more effective. The last ability is Warding Bludgeon, which is a ground slam with a pretty quick animation. It's also your AoE taunt and it also comes with various buffs that it provides for you and teammates. 
By the way, Barrage also has a single target taunt. The perk for this, Crowded Bludgeon, reduces the cooldown if two or more targets are hit. Reduced by 15% on your armor or 25% on your weapon. Nothing insane, but definitely a nice extra benefit here. Now let's look at the builds. We're going to start with this build and I will discuss a lot of things here that also apply for the other builds, so we'll not repeat them there. This is a PvE build, but many of the things that I'll say here will also apply for the PvP builds. This and all other builds assume that you're running at least a kite shield or a tower shield, as well as at least medium armor or heavy armor. I'm not looking at light round shield builds here because I didn't have the chance to test any of that at all. Our first skill here is Arcane Smite. Again, this is the ground debuff damaging ability. Just a very quick animation, it's very effective. The first perk here, Epic Flail, reduces its own cooldown by 5% per target hit, so up to 25% cooldown reduction on a already relatively short cooldown of 18 seconds. Then you have Ironclad Superiority. This works well with both the Kite Shield and the Tower Shield. With the Kite Shield, it will now stagger on hit, uh, but the damage is reduced in return to 90% weapon damage. Or with a Tower Shield, if you prefer that, you get 30% fortify for 6 seconds. Uh, both very good effects to have. For the last perk, you have Deflecting Frailty here. Of course, if you're purely running this as a solo build, you don't need this last perk as well as some of the other last perks. So you can just take out this perk, this perk, and this perk pretty much. Uh, but 99% of the time the flail makes more sense if you're actually playing with other people or you may not want to respec all the time just to not be effective. But even if you're playing as a solo player, I think it's annoying to have to respec every single time you do anything that is with a group, be that OPR, be that Expeditions, whatever it is. So I don't think you would want to respec every single time for that. And as such, I would just keep those points in. It's not like you would make massive solo damage gains by going without these points. The last perk here is a buff for allies. If they step into the circle, they will then weaken the person attacking them and they also gain lifesteal if they're getting attacked. So quite a few nice benefits here. Since the duration scales with focus, this can actually last almost as long as the ability cooldown if you have enough cooldown reduction. A second ability is Arcane Vortex. Again, high damage and empower by default and grit. So very nice. Also just a 16 seconds cooldown. The first point gives us the chance to root targets for one second if we hit them with all four hits. I will tell you that in PvE, this is obviously easily done, in PvP most of the time this won't be happening because it's not very hard to get away from. With the next perk we get 7% haste per hit, as well as allies getting 25% haste right away for 5 seconds. The capstone is the real big deal here, flaming stability provides all of the allies near you with a cleanse and crowd control immunity for root stuns and slows for two seconds by default and then scales up to six seconds with your focus. It also heals allies inside for 65% weapon damage. The capstone we're using is Better Together which provides you with passive AoE healing every two seconds for 60% weapon damage. I will always use this capstone even though I originally thought that the right one may be better. The big advantage of this one is just that it's a lot more consistent, the uptime is just generally better and also it applies for everyone around you and not just one target so you don't have to be as selective as who you're trying to help. I tested this a little bit and in combination with other perks from shield and then artifact flail you actually get ridiculous amounts of self heal. Now for the other perks. Oppressive Advantage and Happy Flails are mainly PvP perks, they don't really do anything for us here. So we're gonna look at some others. We're gonna get Weighted Superiority, which gives you either cooldown reduction for blocking when in heavy or for dodging when in medium. 1% for blocking or 5% for dodging. Very, very effective in general. We're also getting Vital Embrace. The 3% life steal below 50% is not that important for us, but rather the while above 50% health, all flail attacks extend the duration of damage over time effects on targets by 7%. Keep in mind that New World has a ton of damage over time effects now, especially since rune glass dots are everywhere as well. So I think you will get a lot of value out of this. I don't think this perk is strictly mandatory if you prefer something else, but I think it's very useful also to amplify your own damage over time just a little bit. And in order to get some more damage over time, spiky impairment is fantastic. When you block a melee attack while above 90% health, inflict a stack of impairment, the debuff that deals damage to enemies and gives them a 10% weaken, that many other effects also apply. This has a 5 seconds cooldown, but it should happen fairly often. Now, of course, the effectiveness of this depends on how long you stay above 90% health. If you are, for example, in an expedition and you have a healer, then I think this is extremely effective, whereas in solo situations it would be less effective. So again, this is a flex point. The alternative here would be to go over here into Cured Flailment. This gives you impairment when using a heavy attack 
after an ability. So this is a bit more consistent in that regard. But again, one is more for group scenarios, the other one is more for solo scenarios. Leader of the pack gives you 10% more base damage when you're alone. And if there's an ally nearby, it provides them with 5% empower. So good either way. On the right side, we get a Vital Suppressant, which gives us 4% straight up damage reduction above 50% health. Always very nice to have. The second perk kicks in under 50% health and you then reduce stamina damage taken by 10%, which is similar to what we have on Defender's Resolve, that is 20%. The next point we have to take if we want to reach the other ability without going into any of the other abilities, which is Reductive Superiority. When using a Kite Shield, this reduces the duration of debilitates, like rents, for example, or disease by 10%, as well as damage over time effects. Uh, this could be interesting in combination with the new Helm, which does the same thing, but generally it's probably not something that somebody would necessarily want to put points into, so we're kind of forced here. With Tower Shield, you reduce the duration of crowd control effects by 10%. But that gives us access to Warding Bludgeon which I think is a very useful ability to have. It is very quick, it is your taunt for tanking in general, and it also comes with some fortify, so overall good. Stable impairment means that right after using this ability, you immediately want to go ahead and block. Now I haven't fully tested this yet, and I want to figure out some more stuff about it, but generally it should definitely be reasonably strong because it can apply impairments to enemies while you're blocking after using this ability. This ability also creates a link between you and a nearby ally, giving them a 15% empower and giving both of you 10% damage absorption for 8 seconds. So very, very effective. Keep in mind that when you're using this build and you're tanking with it, you don't have access to the single target taunt from Barrage, which I think is just not a very good taunt to begin with uh, because of how this ability works. I think you're better off using a single target taunt from another weapon. Another perk we are getting here is Mitigated Protection, which gives us extra mitigation while blocking, stacking to up to 9 seconds. The exact mitigation depends on your current health as well as your equip load. So in Heavy you immediately get 5% absorption, and then that scales up to 20% as health decreases. In Medium it's 3 down to 13, but both of them fairly effective, both good values. In Light I wouldn't use this. You don't have all 20 points to flex around with, but if there's one that I would flex into, it's absolutely Flail Mary, which gives you 15 stamina, while your stamina is below 30% if you use an ability, which is a very nice last safety net. I don't value Reinforced Vitality very much, because 25% of your physical armor rating is probably around 500-ish health, a little bit more in the expansion, but nothing to write home about. The second PvE variant looks very similar, but it uses Arcane Eruption instead. Now, this will only be effective if we can apply the second hit of Arcane Eruption consistently without significant issues. If that's not the case, then I don't think it's that good. It doesn't come with the same debuff utility, but depending on the situation, maybe you might prefer it. It comes with a 40% slow for 3 seconds. And you can extend the duration of debuffs on the target by 30%. Not dots, but all the debilitating effects. It also has a chain heal for your allies, which unfortunately ends up consuming one of the damaging procs that this ability stacks in the beginning. So you shouldn't use this if you're after DPS, since it will just use up the stack you just created. But on the other hand, it's a chain heal for 130% of the second attack's total damage as health for every ally it chains to, and 80% of the total damage to yourself. If you're running with an actual healer, I don't think this is a necessary thing to have, but if you're trying to run a build where you don't have another healer at all and you're just trying to kind of have people somewhat survive, then I think this is a decent option. Because keep in mind, you have this heal on top of that and you also have this passive heal. And here we have a PvP variant, which is very, very similar to the first skill tree. Uh, the main difference is you're not taking spiky impairment, because in PvP, unless you have a personal healer with you, you're probably not going to be above 90% health as much, and the 5 seconds cooldown is also not that impressive. But on the other hand, the oppressive advantage perk may gain some value here by giving you multiple effects. When hitting a target with less than 50% health, you gain anointed, 5% anointed, as well as 10% haste for 3 seconds. An anointed is an effect that increases the healing that you gain, and this scales with focus as well as can be up to 20%, so you can get up to 20% extra healing here. Uh, you can kind of keep stacking this, it seems, as well. It seems like there is no cooldown on this, so as long as you keep hitting someone under 50%, uh, this will apply. I think a 20% healing increase is solid, but it's not necessarily the best perk everywhere. It's more kind of a might as well if you prefer that for your playstyle. 
Happy flails can also be considered for PvP, which applies exhaust to targets, uh, reducing the stamina damage by 15% for 5 seconds if you use a basic attack within 3 seconds of using an ability. I think it's not the best exhaust, so I'm not overly sold on it, and there are a lot of reduction effects coming into play soon as well, I'm expecting, and it can probably be cleansed, so... Yeah, I wouldn't rate it super highly in the current meta. Maybe if the meta shifts, it could be more valuable. Now with this variant, you won't have an escape and that I think is worth keeping in mind. So you'll either have to have an escape on your other weapon or just accept that you're going without an escape and focus purely on the utility. There are enough weapons that do that, like Void Gauntlet, for example, but it's up to you if you really want to go down that path. Alternatively, here is an option that actually has an escape, which also comes with some utility. Of course, this still has some flexibility. So for example, you could put a vital embrace into flail mary instead you could put this point into spike impairment uh, there's a lot of room depending on what perk exactly you're after but what's important here is that we're getting barrage which gives us the ability to charge out of fights and along with that we're also getting some extra effects so defensive rush gives us a 30 percent fortify for two seconds when rushing out which is nice and more hits extend the duration and then abiding superiority makes this particularly interesting with a tower shield because one of the problems that this ability or this escape has is that it doesn't have grit but with a tower shield barrage actually gains grit while active so that is very very useful so this is the path i would probably choose with a tower shield if you want to have an escape along with that the kite shield version also gets a 20 percent slow if you're dashing through targets with the next point so that's also not terrible at least and here we have Bulldoze, which gives us this extra effect. So Bulldoze allows us to now block attacks while charging forward without consuming stamina. Very nice. And it will push all enemies aside as well instead of just going through them. So that's what I think would be most useful if you're actually going for a tower shield. You just push everyone out of the way and just go in all aggressive. You can also take this last point out of Bulldoze if you say that's not important to me. I'm just using this primarily as an escape and put that, for example, into Flay and Larry. A very similar outcome once again. Or you can say, especially if you're not using a tower shield, so you're not getting grid anyways, I'm just going to do a one point barrage build and that's just my escape and I get some more utility on the right side here. You get uh, all of these perks that we were talking about before already, but you also at the same time get the left side perks where you otherwise have to flex a little bit you have to figure out which one you want to invest into more. Uh, this way you can have all of them, but your barrage just does a little less. When it comes to weapons, I think Odo is definitely a solid choice. It depends a lot on if it can still have a gem slot. Uh, what you cannot get if you put a gem slot on this is Burning Smite, which I think is more important. So I would just sacrifice some damage and go for Burning Smite on Odo, just so we can increase the cooldown of your enemies, which I think is super important to have on your weapon. Alternatively, if you don't care about the self-heal by 5% on block and that extra damage against stun target, which is kind of stupid anyways, uh, you might also want to opt into something that, for example, just has a blessed refreshing move and burning smite or similar. Again, depends on how much you care about damage versus utility, but this is not really a damage weapon. Odo drops from Vanash in the Elysian Wilds. For your shield, I would say the best shield that you can get is the wall as a tower shield, uh, which you can get from Heru in Enead. Alternatively, is a very nice kite shield. There is Michael from the PvP track. Uh, this is coming with a cleanse, but even without that, you can just go for a kite shield that has healing defense and heal on block uh, by itself. That is already pretty strong too. That way you could also get refreshing move on your shield and put something else on your weapon. The exact attribute split is up to you. There's many things that can be done here. Uh, I think a common spec will be primarily into strength because then you can use more strength offense. But if you go more focused, you get a lot of utility out of that, especially the longer cleanse, which is very nice in PvP. So if you can make a 200 focus build happen for you uh, with a little bit of strength and then a lot of con, that should be very, very effective. The exact stat distribution depends almost entirely on your offhand and your overall build, so it's hard to give very specific advice here. I'll talk about the flail in more detail once I've done more testing. If you're interested in that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get notified when that comes out. But for now, happy flailing. If you'd like to support my work further, you can do so on Patreon and get early trading and farming tips in return. Thanks to my patrons who already do exactly that. And thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.